John Caldwell. I run the non-fungible fund at Wave Financial. Uh, we're the first like SEC regulated NFT fund. So we invest in actual NFTs, NFT protocols, things like that. And I've brought together some of my friends, um, people I've worked with, people I've surfed with, people I've collected their artwork, people I go to parties with or wait in line at parties with. Um, so here we all are. And uh, I guess I'll start, I'm gonna start at the end over there. This is a, a great man, his name is William Tong. He works with the Origin Protocol. Um, William is one of the most connected people in the NFT space and uh, I'm just happy to have him here. So do you wanna give an intro on what you do? I'm super grateful to be here, very, very honored, especially on this stage with such amazing, amazing people in the NFT and Web3 space. People that have literally defined the way that I live my life and the way that I move, operate, and support communities. As we see now, Web3 is disrupting or changing or innovating in the Web2 and the prior spaces more now than ever before. It's just incredible to have these spirits and this energy with me in this space. Now, I'm at Origin Protocol, we're always trying to make sure that we're supporting creators and creatives by helping them create NFTs and take their art onto the blockchain via story like XYZ. And also, lucky ducky, just claymation ducks that make you happy. <laughs> um, yeah, we love the lucky duckies. Um, I guess, Melissa, do you want to go next? So this is Melissa. She's a local Bahamian artist. Uh, she just had her first NFT drop today. It sold out in 12 minutes. It's a really big, exciting day. She dropped it on Quantum, which um, I'll get to later. But Melissa, do you just want to say hello and talk about what you did today? Hi, everyone. I'm Melissa. I'm a Bahamian artist here. And yeah, I did just have my first NFT drop, which was wild, <laughs> especially that it sold out so fast. Um, I'm really, really new to this entire kind of world. So I'm really looking forward to being a part of this discussion and some of the other events so that I can kind of soak everything up. Um, yeah, and I'm just happy to be here. Cool, yeah, we're happy to have you. Um, we have Nicole Buffett. She's also an artist um, that sort of has bridged from traditional art into NFT art. So she has a really interesting perspective on that. And um, yeah, why don't you talk about what you've been working on? Hi, uh, thanks so much for having me. Um, yeah, I am a traditional painter who came into this space about a year and a half ago. And I, it has completely expanded my work. Um, the digital medium has allowed me to express and communicate ideas that I've always really wanted to. Um, let's see, I'm working on so many different things. Um, I'm about to be a quantum artist as well and drop my first hand-painted animation series in July. Um, I'm also just really excited about how this space has transformed the role of the artist in the world and really allowed um, the financial community, the technology community, and the artist community to come together and work as a unit and truly, as William was saying, bring about incredible change. Yeah, great. And then, of course, we have Justin Aversano here, my good friend. And uh, I met Justin in the Punks chat room, Larva Labs, on Discord. And um, he was like, hey, do you surf? And I was like, yeah. He's like, do you live in LA? I was like, yeah. He's like, let's go meet at Topanga in an hour. <laughs> and I was like, all right. So I went to Topanga, met him there. And he's like, dude, you got to buy a photo NFT of mine. And I had never heard of him. Um, and I was like, $12,000 for a photo from a random person I've never met is a lot. <laughs> but uh, that was a twin flame, and those are now worth, uh, what's the floor on twin flames? 222. Two, two. ETH. So that's a lot. 600, <laughs> 700K, something. <laughs> anyway, um, Justin is a close friend, and he's an artist, sort of turned CEO. So his journey is very interesting. Why don't you talk about maybe twin flames and quantum a little bit? Sure. Thanks, John. Yeah. Um, I'm grateful to be here with everyone on this panel. John. Um, our fellow artist and Will. Um, I started this journey a year ago in February with Twin Flames, which is a photography project I've been working on since 2017. And I found myself in the punks chat where I actually found a community that actually cared about artists and were interested into supporting art. And from there is where I met John and found myself in this journey. And I had, had some success with my art that I've been working on my whole life. 
And with that success, I built a company called Quantum with some co-founders of mine, Jonas, Alex, Chris Graves. And we are here to uplift and serve the community by bringing on artists who've never been in the space before and hope, hopefully changing their lives for the better and giving them a place to be in the world because art is a job and it's extremely important for culture and people to understand that artists are here to help heal the world. And so Quantum is our company, it's called Quantum Art. It's an NFT platform. We started with photography because I'm a photographer and now we're branching into digital art and fashion and metaverse gamification. So in a way, it's like this whole journey is unraveling every step of the way, everyone we meet and every conference we go to, we just continue building this journey to hopefully do something positive in the world and not create a dystopian future, but a way where we can you know, uplift everybody and give access to crypto and wealth to everyone in the world, because I think that's extremely important. Yeah, that is. Um, I was just checking my notes here for the title of the thing. So it's Art, Culture, and Community in Web3. And we are on the Trusting Disruption stage, sponsored by Dell Tech. So thank you. I mean, I like what Justin was saying about disruption. Um, I think that it's interesting to be at this like traditional finance sort of conference, but also be trying to disrupt. And I think that this conference is actually really interesting that you have you know, a crypto company like FTX that is disrupting the entire industry. Um, and it's sort of a microcosm for what's going on across every vertical. So like art, fashion, community, um, social, like everything is slowly being disrupted by Web3 technology. And um, I guess that's where I'd like to start with you guys is, is like, there's this meme going around that's just like, oh, we are so early. And I wanna you know, talk about that because there's 1.5 million people have ever done an NFT trade ever on OpenSea. So 1.5 million, there's 90 million crypto users on earth and there's around 8 billion people on earth. So in terms of those stats, if you are trading NFTs, if you're buying NFTs, selling NFTs, you are early. But I wanna talk about that because other people who are really in the space are also like, how could Bored Apes be worth 150 ETH? How could this be happening? Are, are we still early or are we at the top of a bubble? So I just wanted to sort of open that up to people, like talk about their friends, what happens when you talk about NFTs to you know people who aren't in NFTs. Um, if we're talking here to the audience, uh, it was supposed to be at 210, by the way, and then they changed it to a earlier times, so not a lot of our friends are here. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we don't know, like, I mean, William, what do you think? I mean, you go around, you you talk to like a lot of Web3 people, but a lot of Web2 people as well. I mean, are we early? Uh, we're definitely early because <laughs> there's always things that are coming along all the time that can change the way things are done. I remember gratefully meeting Justin and Nicole uh, in Santa Monica over lunch, and then Justin's like, hey, Definitely pick up one of my pieces. I looked at it, I thought it was really cool. At the time, there were only 10 Ethereum. And at the time, I didn't have 10 Ethereum. So I told my friends, hey, uh, we should probably buy this. But then they didn't understand enough yet about NFTs and they didn't jump in. So as we're seeing you know, more projects come out now, there's still ways you can educate yourself on the NFT projects, artists, the different things that are coming out, and still be able to get in early enough um, before you know, maybe some of your friends. A great example most recently would be Moonbirds. Moonbirds only came out in like a month ago, and since then, the project has done really, really well. So as long as you guys educate yourselves, you guys really learn about artists and what they're about, the history, then I think you can be really, really successful in this space. And on that note, like for me, for example, hanging around a lot of crypto people who got in 2012, 2016 with Bitcoin and other coins, I feel like I'm late to something because they're all early and they're all billionaires now, and it's like, how do you become early in, in a place like this? And if it's NFTs, maybe we are, even though it was invented in 2017 or so. And maybe we, because we're so involved, it doesn't feel early, but for people who are yet to be onboarded, and maybe it's through you know, mass media or uh, Fortune 500 companies that they will bring in all these people. But again, I think, how do we give crypto 
access to people who can't afford it or don't understand it. And I think there's an education on board that needs to happen if a billion people in the world will have ETH or Bitcoin or some other coin that comes along at some point. So it's easy to say we're early. It's also easy to say we're late. It's just a matter of being present with this technology. At the end of the day, it is a technology. It's also a financial instrument. But we, as artists, see the technology and how to utilize it to create new, innovative things. Right. I mean, the goal is 8 billion people will hold ApeCoin, right? Like within the next couple of years. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, Melissa, like what, what's been your reaction from people when you tell them you're doing an NFT drop? Like your local friends, family, stuff like that? I feel like everyone kind of expected me to get into it as well. And I honestly had no idea how to, how do you NFT, you know? <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do? When I found out about it, it was through like mass media and it was like a couple of year, a year or so ago. I was like, oh my gosh, these people are becoming like millionaires. How, how do they even navigate that space? And when I tell my friends, yeah, like I'm a part of an NFT drop, they're like, wow, that's awesome. But there's kind of like the silence that goes with it because nobody really knows what that means. And I myself am definitely one of those people. Um, so honestly, if I didn't get the opportunity to team up with you guys, I would have never really felt like I had access to that space because it's, it's easy to like try to educate yourself online, but it still feels so foreign. Like you need an in somehow it feels like. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of what quantum does. I mean, quantum, uh, that's Justin's company. Um, it sort of sits in the middle of like retail adoption. So they have retail spaces like on the third street promenade in Santa Monica where people can come in, buy an NFT who have never bought an NFT before, get an avatar of themselves. But then they also sit between onboarding artists. So an artist like you who doesn't know how to do smart contracts or doesn't know exactly the specifications, their dev team sort of holds your hand as you go through that process and strategizes like how much money you should drop, how many you should do. Um, so yeah, Justin, like, as you're doing that, what type of artists are you looking for? Like, what's your criteria to bring people into this space? Well, we have a team of curators who are like museum uh, associates and have worked at museums pretty much their whole lives and have book, book publishing companies. So we have a critical eye on the art we um, curate. And also, it's not about just beautiful art. It's also about inclusivity and diversity, which is al always an important factor to create social equity, which is one of our, you know, most important roles in this space because it's easy to be just giving it to all the men because last year, 95% of all sales were of men. So we started Quantum knowing that we want more than 50% to be women and people of color and indigenous, LGBTQT, every everyone that matters and helps push culture forward and create a different, a difference in the world of the art. Yeah. Again, going back to the you know disruption, we do want to disrupt traditional, um, colonial models, uh, financial oppressive models, um, and I do think Web three is a tool to do that. I I think, in particular, Ethereum and like Vitalik's vision with this stuff was to disrupt a lot of these systems. Um, so we're all trying, I mean, I don't know what your guys' experience is with trying to bring um, good about in this world. I I was able to help with Ukraine DAO. We raised $7 million by sort of fractionalizing the Ukrainian flag right when they were invaded by Russia. And within a few days, we had the support from so many people. They put in $7 million and we were able to like um, deploy that to people in Ukraine like within a few days. Um, and that to me was the first time I really saw how quickly and just frictionlessly you can use these Web3 tools. Um, and I didn't have to write a single line of code. You know, everything was there. There's these building blocks of like party bid and fractionalization and Zora. And you just put them all together and then people can interact like immediately. Um, Nicole too also has worked on important 
conservation project. So I'd love for her to share. Yeah. Yeah, I think the f my most um, exciting project to date is the uh, dolphin commemorative um, NFT. It was a painting that I made um, in memory of a friend's husband who had passed away who loved dolphins. I had made it years before the NFT space began. Um, and she called me up right away when things started happening. She actually worked for a, a hologram company called Portal and now, now called Proto Hologram. And she said, I'd love to, you know, turn this painting into A, a hologram, and B, I would love to help dolphins with this piece in memory of my husband. Do you want to do this? I said, yes, absolutely. That sounds amazing. So um, that's what we did. First, it became a hologram, which was incredible enough just to see it floating. Um, and then we got together with the Open Earth Foundation and created a whole program called the Ocean Drop. They had done the Carbon Drop previous year with people and raised a bunch of money for that. And actually, John was one of the first people to bid on that piece. It was an auction, and we, we raised um, a good amount of money that, that protected the dolphins off the Cocos Islands. And um, I just love that. I think that the capacity for the individual artist to impact causes that we feel passionate about, for me, it's always the earth first. Um, I think that um, we all have such, a, such power to do that. And even if each of us just allocates a little bit of what we're making in this in infinitely abundant new world that we're creating, we can have an infinite amount of impact and preserve the joy and love that's being generated here. Yeah. William, weren't you working on something like with like ocean preservation as well? I'm always working on a bunch of different things because there's so many amazing people on this planet that are trying to do good. One thing that um, I'm working on very recently is there's this, there are these amazing people, they created a project called Ocean Defenders. And for them, off the coast of Hawaii, a lot of people may not know, but actually governments have dumped munitions right outside of the Hawaiian Islands. And they're still there. They're unfortunately leaking into the oceans, damaging uh, sea life, damaging human health, damaging all sorts of different things, especially the coral. So the idea is to be able to sell NFTs, to be able to raise money, and then actually have a guy who goes into the ocean, he finds these bombs, and then he brings them out of the ocean so they're no longer po poisoning the earth as we know it. So for us today, for the people in this room, if there's a mission or a cause or something you're passionate about, you have the power now to activate it and to do something amazing, right. something that before may have taken years or may not have been possible. But because of the technology of the blockchain, of Web3, of the people on the stage and community and the network that we have, you can achieve things that before may never have been possible. So to be able to do something to really save the planet, save Earth, help Ukraine, help artists, it's something that's very beautiful to me, and I'm, I'm grateful for this technology. Thanks. I also think, you know, we have a chance right now, and if, you, if we want to talk about disruption, you, we really have to look at the model of, let's say, Web 2 of finance, traditional finance, and Web 3 of crypto, and how do we not make the same mistakes with all this abundance of wealth that's generated through yielding or coins or inflation, all these things, how do we not make the same mistakes and how do we utilize this new energy to precedent ourselves to actually heal the world and do ocean conservatory and animal you know, saving? How do we make sure we don't make the same mistakes? And we gotta ask that question to ourselves: is the things we're putting money towards, are we doing the right thing? And how do we do the right thing? And I think these are important topics to discuss when we're working in a whole new disruption of, of finance. And how do we use that money for good and not to continue polluting the earth? So that's a question for you guys to think about. Yeah, it's, it is interesting. I think with NFTs, there is like this undertone of um, the artist sort of vision. And so there is a guiding moral principle through like just that creative spirit um and i think that combining that with financial tools is really interesting a lot of nfts and nft culture is just about maximizing um value you know and being exploitive but i think a lot of people are also in an abundance mentality it's not competitive it's not like oh i need to get this and if you get it like it's bad there's the slogan um WGMI, which is kind of cheesy, but it means we're going to make it. And it, it's very inclusive. It's like every single person I've ever interacted with in the NFT space, it's, it's abundance. It's like you provide value, 
not because you're going to get value back, but you just provide value. You want to see your friends make it. You want to see everybody get into this space. And um, I think everybody on this stage has been like so good at that. Um, there's, and I don't see that in other industries, whether it's like Hollywood or maybe traditional finance. It's like people are cagey about their connections and they want to use their connections for maximizing their value. But you know, if I go out and I meet people, Justin will be like, whoever he's talking to, oh, this is John, you should meet him, he's awesome. Or William, or, you know, and we all do that with each other. And here we are, kind of a year out of, maybe a year and a half out of like, the depth of like lockdown and COVID and Clubhouse and when NFTs were emerging. And here we all are, you know, the WGMI prophecy came true, so. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess I also want to touch on um, some of the latest things in the industry. We did have this kind of new collection come out of nowhere uh, recently called Moonbirds. Um, and that is like a Kevin Rose. He was like a Web 2 person. Everybody believes in him as, a, as an investor, as a brand builder. And he created this project that a month ago I had no idea what it was. I saw Justin wearing an owl hat, and I was like, what is that? And um, a month later, it's, it set records. The first day of sales, it did about 10% of the volume of Bored Apes that Bored Apes did in a year. I mean, just crushing, like, crushing volume records. Um, and so as we get into these new collections, these people promoting these new collections, like, what do you guys think that looks like as bigger companies or people with more experience in Web2 and brand building come into the space. I mean, William, you kind of deal with that with Origin a bit, right? Like you're bringing in brands, artists, things like that into your protocol. It's like when we have a lot of brands or a lot of artists come to us for the first time saying they want to create an NFT, one of the first questions we ask is why? Why are you creating an NFT? If it's just for the money, if it's just for commercial purposes, most likely the project won't be successful because that doesn't tie in with the culture of Web3 which is a very collaborative, authentic, sincere environment where we're trying to succeed not in terms of economics, although that does happen, but also in terms of community building, in terms of making sure that our people are taken care of and that we're building a solid financial foundation. So most recently, uh, gratefully, thanks to Rembrandt A. Commas, I get introduced to McLaurin Automotive. So now McLaurin Automotive, one of the most iconic historic brands in the automotive space, they want to release an NFT collection. So for us, it's to talk to them you know, what does McLaren really mean as a brand? What does it mean authentically? What are you trying to communicate to your community? And who are you trying to bring into your community? So for us, as all of the people are, are here in this room, if you're thinking about participating in projects, how do you create something that's really authentic, that really adds value to a space? Not just to the spaces that you're in currently, but also to the Web3 space and to new communities. Because ultimately, that's how you're going to grow what it is that you're trying to do. That's how you're going to make sure the project is successful. And that's how you're going to get the real network and amplification effects of Web3. How do you think we scale? Like, because a lot of the communities right now, they're in the like 10K, 20K. Nothing's really quite bigger than that. Like, how do we scale to larger audiences as we, you know, as founders or as um, community builders, as artists who are trying to expand and bring utility to our community? How do you think we do that? Is it through celebrity endorsements? Is it through brand, you know, bringing in brands? What do you guys think? Maybe we could ask Julia too. <laughs> yes, to all the above. <laughs> um, I kind of am going to touch on that question, and then the other question of like, are we first? Are we, you know, are we still in that zone? And I think that, you know, there's a constant state of innovation happening, and that there's a limitlessness to what this technology. Um, gives us the capacity to do. So the question is, what, what do you want to have happen? It's really an amazing opportunity to consider to what extent can, will my imagination go? You know, what really is my vision? So um, it, it will meet you there. You know, this place meets you where you meet it. So I think that if you can imagine how you can scale, then you will find the way to do it. <laughs> you will find that way. And there's, there's many different channels. And I think the key is really being true to yourself and working with people that you feel aligned with and a kinship with. Justin, what are you doing for Quantum? How are you building your community? I mean, you've done it pretty organically, like from your Discord 
I met a lot of people in there, like Twin Flames collectors. That's like 100 people up to, you know, a couple thousand up to what, like quantum. Like, what's your plan with that? Well, first and foremost, I believe in the artists. And I feel like the artist is what truly makes quantum successful. Like, without the artist, we're pretty much nothing. So it really is down to the artists and how we grow through their work and who we're inspiring and whose lives we're touching and, you know, all these different factors and variables that grow communities is simply through the art and through our leadership. And I think the trust in the trustless nature of the blockchain is really what brings, gravitates people towards quantum in the first place. And I don't think people would want to be working with us if we weren't doing the right thing. And I believe in doing the right thing for the artists first because we have to protect them. Our whole you know, generation of, of being an artist We've always been exploited by companies. We've always been got the short end of the stick. So now we finally have a place to take care of not only ourselves, but the community of artists and forever through, through the royalties factor of NFTs and the smart contract. So I believe the artist always leads the way. And without them, we're pretty much in a, in a, in a bad place to be. <laughs> and just, I guess I always like to do this, just quick show of hands. Um, how many of you have bought an NFT before? All right. And then how, how many of you have sold an NFT before? That's pretty good. You guys are like active NFT traders out there. That's <laughs> nice. It's always hard to sell because you sell and then you're like, oh, the number kept going up. <laughs> we all have our horror stories. I sold Bored Apes very early. <laughs> Talking to William, or he uh, sold his ape coin a bit early. Like, we all are... <laughs> you know, forged in the fire of FOMO. Um, <laughs> but I think that that's like, it's tough. It is very high risk. It feels kind of like gambling at times, even with the most like well thought out investment thesis or strategy, there's still a lot of risk involved with this stuff. So as we onboard people, there's a bit of a duty to to warn them of that or tell them, you know, because People come in and they get wrecked, and then they never want to come back. So it's tough. Um, and I don't really know the answer to that. Like, it's it's a tough one. I think the answer is be creative, be the artist you are in your heart, and don't you don't think about trading when you could be creating. Like, all of us here are artists, and you know I haven't made my wealth flipping apes or punks. Like, I, 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 I'm a paper hand, so I always lose profit. So. Being an artist, I'm able to generate wealth through my creativity out of the ethereal plane, which is great why it's called Ethereum, but in a way, like, it really gives us power and power back to the creator when we can literally create value out of just an idea and minting it on the blockchain, and here we are speaking to you at a conference because we've done that so well. Uh, I agree with Justin, absolutely. In this space, you can trade, you can buy, and you can sell NFTs, but really, real wealth creation comes from creation. It comes from building. It comes from being an artist and putting your art into the world. People, um, he did art, digital art, every single day of his life. And ultimately, he took 5,000 days of art that he had given away for free prior. He put it onto the blockchain, and he was able to auction it for $69 million at Christie's. So for those of you that are in this room, as you build, as you create, you will be rewarded pretty much directly because of Web3 and the blockchain. And for the first time in my life, I'm able to see that really translate through. Where in the past, when people may have created things or built things, they may not have gotten their recognition or financial success or anything along those lines. So it's a beautiful space, and I'm glad to know all of you. Yeah, it's definitely a build it and they will come kind of situation. Like, one, like hands down, even just being here in the Bahamas and not understanding, you know, how can I reach a wider audience of people and who, what platform will allow me to do that. I was still initially never creating for the purpose of making money as much as I was creating for the purpose of uplifting other people throughout my community and my Bahamian community. And then it just, people just kind of gravitate towards you. And it's a beautiful thing. And it's a beautiful thing to be able to then take some of that money and then put it back into the same community which you were trying to uplift in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. There is a law of reciprocity in the Web3 space that should be always talked about. Is like if you gain, you should always give back. And I think that giving back and that cycle, that karmic cycle of supporting one another is what will 
ultimately make this space more sustainable because if we have more extraction and exploitation than we do the giving, then this, this will fail. Yeah, that does happen a lot. People will do a project, they'll mint out, like that happened with Noah from Christie's, like he did Howlers and then he sold out and immediately took that and bought a CryptoPunk. So like you cycle it into new things and you're always trying to give it back to the communities you believe in or that you want to support. Um, I mean, one one thing that's worked for me, just flipping NFTs, because I'm not an artist, um, or I'm not an you NFT. You are an artist. I know, I'm a painter, but I don't <laughs> do NFT art. Um, I tend to rotate, and I think that works really well. Like, so you, maybe you make some profits on something, you buy two, you can, you know, get double, double, sell one, take your principal out, and then rotate into something new. And that's what's helped me really avoid some of this, like, horrible, horrible FOMO with certain projects. Cause like you sit there and you're like, oh, I bought that thing and then I sold it and it went to millions of dollars or I was gonna push the slider to buy 20 apes and I didn't. And if I had pushed that button, <laughs> I'd be like, you know, <laughs> sponsoring Crypto Bahamas. But <laughs> the way I've dealt with that is I rotate. And as you rotate, you get exposure to more and more and more. And you just hope that in this hit driven market, you know, one or two of them sort of pay for all of your losses. And my advice for the audience, when you're thinking about what NFT should I buy, like think about the artist, right? Think about, do you want to be a, a part of their journey their whole life? If you think about how galleries work in Gallery 2, like we have Web 2, um, it's these people support these artists for their whole career. So it's not just a one buy and one I leave. It's like, I'm gonna be side by side with this person forever because I believe in them as a human being and an artist. And so it's like, find that one artist that you truly care about and just stand by them and support everything they do because that is what will change people's life, like Melissa's. Yeah, like me. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely can't get over this morning. I, everything feels surreal to just you know, work with you guys, work with Quantum, and then everybody was just so supportive. Like, I don't know anybody, I'm coming on, everyone's like, you gotta get on Twitter. I'm like, I don't even understand Twitter. How do you work Twitter? You know, um, I would just mainly post on Instagram, and then the next thing you know, I'm on Discord, and everybody is like, yeah, I love your, love your pieces, I love your work, go Melissa. And it really felt like almost unusual to feel that much support from people who you do not know. You know, it didn't feel like what we touched on earlier, which is like people kind of just gatekeeping and, oh, I'm gonna make this money and I'm not gonna let you know how. It didn't feel like that at all. It just felt so warm and, you know, welcoming. And then to watch everyone continuously like repost and they're, you know, bigging you up and you're like, holy crap. And then <laughs> you wake up in the morning and you look at your account and you're like, did that really just happen? <laughs> yeah, and just to give everybody who came in a bit later some background. So Melissa had her first NFT drop today. It, it, it was on Quantum. It sold out in 12 minutes. So it's a really exciting day for her as an artist. Thanks. Um, and I think it's just such a cool, beautiful moment. Like she's here, you know, she had her first, the timing was just sort of random. It was today, <laughs> you're on this panel, you're here with Justin who helped create Quantum. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of cool synchronicity here and we're really happy for you. Yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're gonna wrap up in a few minutes here. I, I think I'd like to just talk about any upcoming trends you guys are, you know, looking at in NFTs. Um, I'll start, I guess, like gaming, gaming, metaverse stuff. It's obviously the buzzword, but um, I used to play video games. I played World of Warcraft at the height. WoW had like 50 million active users. Roblox has around 50 million active users. And like I said, um, active NFT traders, probably like a million or less. So there's a lot of growth there, a lot of potential to onboard people as you bring in-game assets like weapons or skins into the into these games so i'm very bullish on that long term also fashion metaverse fashion stuff i think is really cool but um let's go this way let's work it back towards me in 30 seconds <laughs> each 
from a larger perspective, what's really inter interesting in this space right now is all the new things that are being created. So it's been said that of the current uses we know now for NFTs, that probably is going to wind up making up only 10% of how NFTs overall are used. So for example, although we talk about art, culture, and community in Web3, the money element is there. So for those of us that bought Board Apes in the beginning, Board Ape Yacht Club, a specific NFT project, we may have paid around $500. Someone recently did an analysis where all of the assets that you have been given as a result of having this one Board Ape Yacht Club NFT amounts to about $700,000 today in US dollars. So for those of us that got something a, a year ago, May 1st, 2021, $500, today, May 1st, 2022, you have about $700,000. So NFTs, they're really changing the way that we see things. And the reason there's so much interest in this space is also because of the money. So for those of you that are here that are sincere about making a positive impact, about making a difference, about using technology to shape not just the world that you inhabit, but the one you're trying to create, this technology can really amplify and accelerate the rate at which you do things. So the best way to succeed in this space, as Justin said, is that we're all going to make it. It's to talk to people that are in this space, figure out how you can collaborate and work with each other. Because I found more success and happiness in this space because of my friends than if I had, than if I would have had to try to do it alone. Cool. So well said. I don't even want to, <laughs> but I'll I'll say yes. And yeah, intersection uh, collaboration. That's the key. Um, thank you. William, for saying that so beautifully. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Cool. Melissa? Her, her spirit seeds are awesome. Definitely collect those. <laughs> spirit coins, spirit, spirit seeds. Coins. Any trends or things you're excited about in the NFT space, or are you still just... Um, I'm literally just soaking all of this in. Good, good. <laughs> I'm like so brand spanking new to the NFT space. I'm kind of looking forward to being a part of it more and just like watching what everybody does and figuring out how I can be a part of it. and also like make a difference. So this is like very enlightening to be on this panel while also like actively learning at the same time. Yeah. Well, come to NFT NYC. The conferences um, are a really great circuit to meet people and learn about projects. So yeah. Justin, what are you excited about? Well, I'm excited about bringing NFTs to the real world because that's where we are right here, right now. And there are there is so much talk about metaverse and VR and like, what about right here, right now? What about being together presently in the moment in physical reality? We can't forget where we come from because we're, hu we're humans and we're here. And I think what we're d building with Quantum, building these IRL spaces around the world, is a testament to how much we believe in not only the metaverse idea, but the universe of where we, where we are. And coming together in these spaces to talk about NFTs, to exhibit the work, to celebrate artists, to gather, to connect, just like we're doing here. And my thesis for the NFTs is actually being in that real world. Cool. All right, well, thank you, everybody, for listening. All said. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.